Well, let's get into uh, our newspapers this morning. And uh, we have joining us Dr. Kwame Asasante, political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, together with being uh, the director for the Center for European Studies. Doc, good morning. Good morning, Ben. Pleasure having you. Uh, since we just saw snippets of that report uh, by Samuel Kojobrace, my colleague, I recently had an interaction with Professor A.C. Sutherland, uh, who is the daughter of Ifwa Sutherland. And she was distraught about how we've left, you know, the Ifwa Sutherland Park to basically become overgrown with weeds. It, it's, it's a crying shame. It's, it's a far cry from what it used to be. But what maybe are your memories of the Ifwa Sutherland Park? And, and what do you feel we can do in a situation like this? Very, very sorry to hear um, children speak this way. Um, this was a very lively place that um, when I was a level student, I used to study at the George Padmon Memorial Library. So I'm very familiar with that place and the terrain, very good. Uh, children have facilities to play with and all that. Um, today, it's left to rot. It gives you, um, you know, a real picture as to our maintenance culture that we don't have in this country. In fact, it doesn't exist in our lexicon at all. Because how do you allow such a place to go down like that? Meanwhile, there are people who are responsible for parks, gardens, uh, and so forth and so on. What are they doing? Are they still drawing salaries and that nobody is their supervisor who can call them to order? I mean, um, institutions are down. Institutions are, when you have institutions that are working, somebody will trigger a process that will make you uncomfortable if you are the, you know, a duty bearer there. But it seems to me that there is nothing that we can boast of. It's a shame unto all of us that because, you see, uh, children are very important people in our society. And if you look at their, their rights and privileges and all that in the Children's Act, it's a lot. When I was a student at the Ghana Institute of Journalism, I was the president for international journalists for children's rights. And we fought for some of these things. I'm surprised that today we are in uh, the places in such a sorry state. It's, it's unfortunate. We want the leaders to up their game and bring back the, the life of the place. Mm. Well, most definitely, and that will serve our children very well. But let's get into the papers now. Uh, we'll start with the Daily Graphic newspaper. Lack of funds stalls tourism projects. Ebri Gardens, Yasantua Centers facelift in limbo. Uh, pictured here, the Yasantua Museum facelift, which has uh, stalled. But let's take a quick look at that story. Redevelopment work on three different tourist centers in the country have delayed. This follows uh, the delay in the release of funds to complete the 1.64 million Ghana City project on schedule. Uh, the centers are the Abri Botanical Gardens in the eastern region, and that fetches quite a bit in terms of revenue every year. Uh, there's also the Ya Asantua Museum in Ejisu and the Ya Asantua Mausoleum in Ejisu Besiense, both in the Ashanti region. The target was to complete construction work to give a facelift to the facilities before the end of the first quarter of the year. However, following the delay in the release of funds from the Ministry of Finance, the five contractors awarded contracts for the work have all abandoned the sites after completing about 27% of the projects on the average. The contractors are So Good Engineering and Construction, Grand Space Limited, Sontim Group Limited, Trafalgar Limited, and Fiscal Constructions Limited. But Doc, I have a question. Even when we, we attempt such projects to give a facelift to these edifices, you know, museums and the others, who, which would then give us that touristic boost and, and maybe f get more people coming to our country. Look at what happens. In the meantime, you see why some of us become plaintive, because in the meantime, we're pumping $574 plus million dollars into a national cathedral, and yet we can't even find 1.64 million Ghana cities to give a facelift to places like this. Your, quick, your, your, your thoughts on this, your reflections. Nothing more than misplaced priority. Mm. All right. We, we don't put our priorities right. All right. There are things that we need to do and do them urgently. There are things that, yes, we can stagger and then hold on and do it later. All right. 
And we are not, a, as, a, as a state, we are not able to figure these things out and define them appropriately uh, to meet our needs. Look at the places we are talking about, a uh, botanical gardens and uh, the other one. Uh, we have a lot of tourists going there for attraction, uh, for studies, uh, for just aesthetic beauty of the place. Is that what we are getting now? Why can't you develop it and then rig the necessary revenue for it? Do we need somebody to come and point this thing out to us that, look, this is the, this is the hand that lays the golden egg. I mean, time and again, we pride ourselves that, yes, we have a lot that people can come here and then, you know, places that people can come and visit and then we can make money and all that. We always uh, want the world to know that we have ideas that will re really uh, bring us resources to manage the affairs of the, the state. If that is the case, we want to see people on the ground doing something. Why are we uh, doing such a disservice to ourselves? I mean, they need budgets and the budget must uh, come on time so that they can put the place in shape. I think uh, going forward, we need to be vigilant. And now I believe that citizens also, we owe it a duty to hold, uh, you know, people who hold political positions, uh, you know, answerable to some of these things. That, look, if you don't fix these things, don't come to us for any vote. We'll vote you out. When we begin to threaten them that way, uh, they will begin to set up. But when we leave them out, I'm afraid, uh, we are not going to have value for money. Uh, it's, it's, it's a sorry state that we find ourselves uh, as far as these issues are concerned. Well, let's talk about the depreciation of the CD. There's that story on page 13, CD depreciation affecting businesses, manufacturers, traders cry out. The story is on page 13. But just to set the background to it, you know that there have been talks about whether the CD is going to hit 10 CDs to the dollar by end of uh, year. Uh, inflationary, the, the inflationary rate is around 30%. The CD has lost almost 30% of its value uh, to uh, the, the American greenback. And it goes on and on. You know about our debt situation and how now we've had to, you know, call on the IMF. But a section of the business community has called on the government to urgently take steps to address the depreciation of the Ghana CD against major currencies. And of course, it's not just the American greenback. It's also the British, the Great British Pound and uh, the European Euro, among other currencies. Now, those who made the call lamented the fall in the value of the local currency against major international trading currencies, particularly the dollar, saying the situation was badly affecting op operations of businesses, which had also made it difficult to market their products. Speaking on behalf of manufacturers, the business development manager of steel manufacturing company, B5 Plus Limited, Sandeep Sal uh, Saulani, said it was crucial for government to fix the CD rate against the dollar since every business depended on it. Quoting him uh, to rap, we import a majority of our raw material and now the prices have been increased by 50%. This forces us uh, to increase our prices, which is a big challenge. We therefore expect the government to come up with a solution. Uh, the other, Guta, the, the Ghana Union of Traders uh, Association, has come out to say that, look, if we're not careful, the 10 CD to $1 uh, pairing that I was talking about, they could soon need 1 million Ghana CDs just to get $100,000 for trade. W w what does all of this mean to you? Um, what I see is that our people who manage the economy um, are not doing what we expect of them. Because, look, um, much as we are waiting for the IMF to come in, we need to put our house in order. There is something little that they can do while are waiting for the IMF to come in with a bank. All right. So what are they doing now? Is it the case that they want but, but, IMF but, but, to no, come in and write they, these they, they, they say They say they've done that. They say uh, they've, they've slashed executive salaries by 30%. They've cut down on uh, petrol or fuel supplies by 50% to those who usually get it uh, as freebies. Uh, they say they've done quite a lot. And in fact, that is one of the reasons they say they disagree with Standard & Poor's downgrade of Ghana's economy from B- minus to CCC plus with a negative outlook. They say they are doing something. Is it the case that we have inflation on our hands, which is 30%? Is it the case or is it not? All right. If it is the case, 
we need to do something about it because as soon as I'm not economist, but as soon as you have the, the economic fundamentals wrong, you are it's going to expose you to the vagaries of other things that will undermine the economic fortunes of this country. All right. I mean, they know economics better. Once you have inflation 30%, uh, it's not good enough. They need to do something about it. So whether they slash salaries of the uh, ministers and whatnot, the stark reality is that now inflation is 30%. Our debt burden is still increasing with amazing rapidity. And we have some of the economic fundamentals still wrong. I think that they need to go back to the table, look at some of these things, and double up their efforts. Because uh, before uh, IMF comes in, and if we, not, we are not sure, we are not careful, we are going to have a lot of difficult situations on our house, which I'm not sure the people of this country are interested in what experience at all, at all. Let's wrap with uh, just one more story from the Daily Graphic newspaper, or maybe another one. But let's take a look at this. Access Bank Ghana posts positive first half results, at least good uh, there. Good news there. Uh, kudos to them. But ruling on cannabis cultivation, Mental Health Authority hails decision. Let's turn to page 13 once more for that. And the Mental Health Authority has hailed the Supreme Court's ruling on cannabis cultivation in the country. What exactly have they been saying? According to the authority, it was excited about the ruling since allowing the cultivation of the substance was going to have harmful consequences on the country. Quote, we are excited because some of us foresaw that the legalization of cannabis cultivation was going to bring untold hardship on Ghanaians. It was obviously going to bring about mental health issues, physical complications, or even cancer. The, the CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Kwesiose, told the Daily Graphic in uh, Crop. Just to top up, so the Supreme Court on July the 27th, 2022, declared as unconstitutional a section of the Narcotics Control Commission Act 2020, that is Act 1019, which allows licenses to be granted entities to cultivate small quantities of cannabis, popularly referred to as we in Ghana for industrial and medicinal purposes. It was in a 4-3 majority decision by the Apex Court. But the question I would pose to you, across the world, some countries are legalizing this, whether for recreational or medicinal purposes, Doc. And some are reaping huge benefits from it by way of tax. So they are getting revenue from the cultivation and they are controlling its use. I do recall that uh, uh, Kofi Annan of blessed memory also spoke about this issue and how we could get some revenue uh, from it before his his demise may his soul rest in peace what do you think about it is it high time we got to the point where we we allowed some level of it but with the proper regulation to control it or is it because maybe since we don't have the right regulations to control it and the systems we should just uh, let it go for now you see, it has all the benefits that one can talk about, but there are problems associated with it. It's like having nuclear. People say, you know, let the country go nuclear, nuclear. How to maintain, how to handle it is a, the difficulty. If we don't have that infrastructure in place to take care of some of these challenges, then it becomes a difficulty. All right. I believe that they need to put together the stakeholders, i.e. the mental health authority mm -hmm. specialist, and then those in that industry to come together in a roundtable form, discuss this thing thoroughly so that the nation can, you know, take a decision on that. But that knee-jerk reaction or decision that they are quickly want to, uh, you know, allow these things uh, in a wholesale that everybody can go into that production uh, is going to create a problem because we have seen mental health issues in this country. We have not been able to what, handle them and want to compound them. I agree with the Supreme Court strongly that they came out with that this ruling that was starting the test of time. It's good that, yes, um, we need to go back to the drawing board. If indeed there is something beneficial from it that we want to tap, there is a need to get the stakeholders together and then discuss it and take what a very important, you know, rational decision. 
Let's get into the Ghanaian Times uh, newspaper now. 2 million euro COVID-19 uh, vaccination uptake campaign launched four foreigners jailed for human trafficking. That story on page three. And then community-wide power cut in Yellow Manyakrobo. This is a very disturbing story. Corpses decompose in mortuaries. That's a question, though. It's a question. But from what we've been hearing so far, uh, people have complained about uh, going to hospital. Someone was complaining about, I think, his brother or brother-in-law. Uh, they took the person to hospital, one hospital, the next. No power. He couldn't be attended to. By the time they got to the next hospital, he had lost his soul. He had passed, basically, or he had, he had passed on to glory. Similar incidents. Now, corpses are also said to be decomposing in these mortuaries. Let me just bring you snippets of that story on page 15. And uh, I guess this will be the main one that I would have you uh, share your thoughts on a doc. So corpses stored in mortuaries in the Yellow and Manyakrobo municipalities in the eastern region are decomposing due to the community-wide power cut. Consequently, mortuary operators are asking families in the two municipalities to come for the remains of their loved ones to prevent the bodies from further decomposition and posing health hazards to the general public. A concerned resident, Edmund Abwaji, who raised the alarm in an interview with journalists, said about five families had received incessant calls from mortuary attendants to retrieve their bodies because they were decomposing at the facility. <clears throat> now, um, speaking in an interview on Joy FM's Midday News on Tuesday, which is yesterday, Madame Ofe explained that the hospitals in the affected municipalities were compelled to rely on generators to provide health services. As she stated that hospitals in the municipality without power spend between 3,000 and 5,000 Ghana cities to provide emergency services, theater services, admissions, keeping blood vaccination, and keeping refrigerators running. In simple terms, Doc, this is chaotic. It's shambolic, and it's happening right under our noses. But just to give you a fair picture, what is not captured here? The ECG has also been speaking to the, the issue, and it says, look, the, it is not our will for, for this to happen, but there have been challenges, and we know about the prepaid meters and the, the, the tussles between the ECG and its task force and the community members. But should an entire community be victimized? Some of them, they were disconnected, they reconnected, even from, I think, the main power source, they were disconnected, they went and reconnected and all of that, and some ECG workers were assaulted. But when you look at what has happened versus what is happening. Corpses decomposing. You know how we treat uh, our dead bodies, how we reverence the dead as well. Uh, people losing their lives because they go to hospital and there's no light. Hospitals having to spend about 5,000 CDs a day and all of that. Not to talk of the economic downturn. People with uh, cold stores and the rest, everything rotting away. Doc, I, I don't know what you make of this, but it, it really is sad. <laughs> It is unfortunate we find ourselves in this situation. Um, I there are there are two sides to that this story. If you hear the ECG story, it's a good one. Why is it that some people are not ready to pay for the energy that they consume, and for which reason they want to? If they are disconnected, they want to connect themselves. That's unfortunate. Nobody does that in this country. That you pay for what you consume. How can ECG sustain themselves if we are not ready to pay? And more so when they send people to go and uh, take lawful duties, then people attack them. What do you expect them to do? And I mean, we want to save our employees and save the business that we do. Much as we want to protect or supply energy to the community, we want to also what? Maintain business. The business must keep going. And here you are, people attacking them and all that. Um, this brings to mind the issue of you know, responsibility, that we need to be responsible for some of the things that we do. It is unfortunate we are here because the other bit is that there are people who have also paid, they honor their, their bills regularly and all that, and we have lumped all of them together and they are tuning for the sense of uh, those and, who and, have and really... And then that, that is the, the problem. That is the problem. That is the problem. <clears throat> but I believe that the ECG should be able to figure uh, those people out and then, <clears throat> if possible, give them energy. But those who don't want to pay, I believe that they are not entitled to energy at all. Otherwise, you create the, uh, you open the floodgate for people to say that they have the courage to say that we want to enjoy electricity, we don't want to pay. 
and that people who want to also attack people who do lawful duty. I don't understand that. The police must, you know, you know, zoom on them and then, you know, crack the whip. I don't get it because this is a country of laws. We cannot do things arbitrary. There are rules of the game that if you are dissatisfied with an action of a government or agency of anybody within the state, you have the right to go to court and seek redress. But you don't take the law into your own hands and then you send us to the state of nature. That's unfortunate. So the situation as we find ourselves uh, in there, it's a very difficult one. But the question is, now who calls them? Mm. Now who calls them? Now who calls them? Just to give you the headlines and other stories, Queen Mother of Shreso in court for allegedly defrauding by false uh, pretense. Uh, we see a lot of our traditional leaders nowadays in, in, involved in all kinds of uh, things. It appears the institution uh, seems to be lo losing some moral high ground. Task force pulls down brothels at Wasam in Fee West. And of course, when I say the institution, I'm not saying generally, but you keep hearing these stories and it means there's a problem in our, our chieftaincy and, you know, traditional institutions that needs re remedying. Uh, four foreigners jailed for human trafficking. Four Nigerians were last week sentenced to jail uh, terms ranging between five and seven years for engaging in human trafficking. That's it with the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper now. Nana inspects uh, 9.2 million Ghana CD 1D1 f factory in Bimbala, of course. That is Nana Ekofuado, the president. Uh, there's also teacher sodomizes 18 students in Salaga, jailed seven years. A circuit court in Tamale sentenced her, him to seven years. He had been sodomizing these uh, students. Really sad development there because the law is clear on such um, uh, you know, actions or habits. Three arrested over TKSHS students at death and Mahama slams government over economic uh, downgrade. There's also Dr. Anya adjudged Africa's most respected CEO. And that's quite a feat. Let's get into uh, that story. Maybe you can uh, tell me what your thoughts are on, on this feat, Dr. Anya being adjudged Africa's most respected CEO, and then uh, the bit about the sodomization of 18 uh, students. But let me get to that story on page eight. So very quickly, <clears throat> Chief Executive Officer and Executive Chairman of the Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm, we all know them, don't we? Dr. Felix Kwekwanya has once again made Ghana proud by being conferred with Africa's Most Respected CEO Award. Dr. Anya received the award at an event dubbed African Giants, held recently in Mauritius. The event was hosted by the Business Executive in, in collaboration with the Economic Development Board in Mauritius. Just a bit of a background, yeah? Over 10 years after its establishment, the Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm is still the only medical spa in Ghana and accredited by the Ministry of Health. Uh, it's located along the Volta River at Sogakoppe, uh, which was also conferred with an award as Africa's best destination spa for wellness conference. So uh, we salute Dr. Anya for this feat. And uh, of course, he's done us all proud. But your quick reflection on this feat, of course, uh, a, a good one there, a feather in our cap. And then this bit about sodomy. Uh, doc. Yeah, I'll start with Dr. Anya. Mm. Kudos to the doctor for a good work done, making this country proud and all of us proud. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the people that we want to celebrate. Uh, more often than not, you don't hear some of these stories, negative, negative, but positive stories uh, that has been brought to light by this. I commend the newspaper. I commend uh, Dr. Anya for a good work done. We want him to, we wish him well, and want him to continue to take the country to higher heights in terms of what achievement and all that. And that this will serve as what? A learning curve for all of us so that um, when you serve your country and you serve it well, um, there are people who are watching. You'll be recognized and one day you'll be praised like Dr. Anya. We, we are happy and then we wish you the very best. Come to sodomy of school children is very, very unfortunate. Um, teachers must know that when children are in their schools and all that, they are supposed to, they owe them a duty of care, a duty of care. You take care of them and then you don't do what the laws do not require you to do. Um, I believe that, you know, GS and all those um, academic, you know, stakeholders must look at constant education with regards to the rules of the game. Teachers must know the bounds that they cannot cross 
And so must students also be apprised with information that these are the barriers you cannot cross. Once you, you get the two educated along these lines, uh, all things being equal, we are going to save some of this situation. But we should know that whoever crosses any line, the sanctions, uh, the sanction regime must be kicked in to address the situation so that people will not look at it as if that there are no rules governing what we do. There are rules. And that when you cross the line, you should have your fingers bent. Doc, there's one major story I'd like you to react to, but I'll just look at some headlines before getting to that, and then you can react to that one story. Um, the Daily Statesman has a number of stories we've already uh, looked at, but it also says uh, Ghana's feet at Commonwealth Games lauded NSS extends PIN code registration deadline to August the 22nd. Then there is the Finder newspaper, which says special financing instruments needed to grow oil palm sector in West Africa. That's according to Jim Fee, uh, the custodian. One year on, NLA touts successes under Sami Ewuku. But what I want you to react to, Republic Press. <clears throat> Mahama renews attacks on government as he proffers solutions to economic woes, but Ekufuado remains resolute in spite of S&P downgrade. Uh, we, we've all heard the reaction of government. Uh, you've shared some thoughts on the CD, but the stance right now, even uh, targeting the S&P, Standard & Poor's, that they are not being fair to us. When it goes our way, we receive it. When, and, and we applaud it. When it doesn't go our way, we criticize it. What's your quick thinking on that in some 30 seconds? I think we must be honest to say that here we have not done well and that we take whatever assessment uh, that comes with it, all right? Uh, once we do that, we are able to receive a lot of what good counsel and it shape our focus and direction. Uh, anytime we have such positive results, Report. See the way we glorify that, we jump at that and all that. It is in the same spirit that we want us to what I want people to what take in their strikes, stories or reports that are not in their interest and work at it. That is the way to go. You know, as you are in government, it is not always the case that you get things right. But when you, you get things wrong, you must be in a position to admit that here I went wrong and that I'm ready to be tutored and then chart a new path. That is the way to go. Let us remember that we don't run our own businesses. We run businesses on behalf of the state. And there are people whose duty it is to look at this, access them from time to time and tell us, we must be grateful to them. Because these things, if you tax people to do, you need to pay money for it. This is free of charge. Take it, work at it, and then improve the lives of people. Right. That's all. I, I I, I, I have to sneak in this one. CDD wades into no Ghana card, no vote debate, vows to block EC. Just give me some 10 seconds on this. W what do you think about this entire debate? Ghana card, no Ghana card, no votes. The CDD is vowing to block the EC. I disagree with the EC vehemently on that score. Mm. All right. And I share the view with CDD and then uh, Dr. Freja. Now, look, let us have other documents that will really uh, allow people to have their franchise exercise. That's all. Democracy, that is targeted at what? Eliminating people from the, the franchise system. It, is, it, 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 it degenerates into mobocracy, mob rule. Mm. That is not what we are looking for. We are looking for a democracy that will stand the test of time, that people will have the right to express themselves as to who leads their country. And we should not put anything in their way. Any effort at that, I will join those forces and go to court and seek redress against that type of ugly proposal, which doesn't bode well for democracy of this country. I disagree with that vehemently. Doc, on that note, uh, we sew it up. But thank you so much uh, for joining us for this conversation. Always refreshing having you. We wish you the best, sir. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Right. And that is Dr. Kwame Asasanti, political scientist, director for the Center for European Studies. Well, up next, we move from all the intellectual talk and talk about intellectual sports. Sports, up next. <laughs>